Good day learners and welcome back to my channel. Today's topic is all about Philippine literature. As we all know, Philippine literature is literature associated with the Philippines from prehistory through its colonial legacies and on to the present. Pre-Hispanic Philippine literature was actually epics passed on from generation to generation originally through an oral tradition. At the end of our lesson, you must be able to recognize the literary texts in the different regions written in different genres covering regions in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Another objective is to analyze the literary texts written in various genres from various regions in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao in terms of structure, culture, and society, at the same time, its literary devices. And lastly, you should be able to present the comparison of literature from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Those are the objectives that we need to accomplish at the end of our lesson. To begin with, the Philippines is composed of three major islands known as Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. The largest islands are Luzon, followed by Mindanao, and the Visayas group. The Visayan region is composed of about 6,000 islands, including Panay, Samar, Cebu, Leyte, and Bohol. Mindanao, on the other hand, encompasses about 400 islands. Literature in the Philippines has a diverse and rich collection of works that evolved alongside the country's history. Long before the arrival of Spanish influence, literature began with fables and legends created by the Asian Filipinos. Moreover, main themes are the country's pre-colonial cultural traditions as well as the socio-political histories of its colonial and contemporary traditions. Just like what I have mentioned earlier, Luzon is one of the largest islands of the country. It is divided into eight regions, namely Ilocos Region, Cagayan Valley Region, Cordillera Administrative Region, National Capital Region, Bicol Region, Central Luzon, Mimaropa, and Calabarzon. Presenting with you the major regional languages in Luzon, we have the following, Bicolano, Ilocano, Kapampangan, Pangasinense, and Tagalog, which coined the term Tagalog literature which flourished more during the Japanese era for the reason that English was banned at that time. Authors from Metro Manila seem to be widely accepted among readers as their popularity is more observed and evident. This could be attributed to NCR serving as the focal point of politics, culture, and economics. Furthermore, most of our influential historical figures who were writers themselves such as Jose Rizal, Andres Bonifacio, Jose P. Laurel, and Amado Hernandez were from Luzon. And as you noticed, majority of the recognized national artists are actually came from Luzon. This is an epic about three heroes, Baltog, Handyong, and Bantong, who all defeated their adversaries. The second major work is Hudhud, came from Calgayan Valley region. This is an epic chanted by the Ifugaos during harvest. It's about a folk hero named Aliguyon and his three-year battle with Pumbakayon. Third, we have the legend of Maria Makiling from Calabarzon. This is a story about a mountain in Laguna named Makiling that was guarded by a fairy named Maria. The town's folk fondly called her Mariang Makiling. And lastly, we have Biagni Lamang, came from Ilocos region. This is an epic about Lamang, a man with extraordinary strength who sets out to find his missing father, Don Juan. Moving forward, Visayas is the Philippines' smallest island group. 
Western Visayas, Central Visayas, and Eastern Visayas are its three regions. It is composed of main islands namely Bohol, Cebu, Panay, Samar, Negros, and Leyte. Major regional languages um, used in Visayas, we have Cebuano, Hiligaynon or Ilongo, Kinaraya, and Waray. In addition, um, most of the literature of Visayas are written in regional languages and there is limited to no available translation in Tagalog. The call to write in mother tongue has been the battle cry of many writers from the other regions na relative to acknowledging regional and local languages. Modern literature revolves around poetry and drama which are mostly satirical in nature and deal with social behavior produced since the 1900s up to the present. The literature produced is widely written in Waray, Cebuano, and English. At the same time, the love for poetry runs in the blood of Visayans, and that's a fact. Many critics regard Visayan literature as the home of hybrid forms, particularly in the Romance novels, where age-old patterns such as Corrido are mixed with new trends and genres that mostly depict social realities. And these hybrid forms are also rich in local colors, revealing Visayan cultures and traditions. According to Sugbu, unlike in Luzon, where writers have so much exposure, in Visayas, the lack of a venue for publication hinders the flourishing of fiction on this island. Presenting with you the major works in Visayas, we have three. First, Hinelawad came from Western Visayas. This is an epic that tells about the adventures of three demigod brothers, namely Dumalaptap, Labaudonggon, and Humadapnon. This 28,000 verse epic is one of the longest epics in the world. Second, Sikalak and Sikavai came from Central Visayas. This is a creation myth about how man and woman came into existence through a bamboo shoot. And lastly, we have Tungkong Langit and Aluncina came from Western Visayas. This is a creation myth about the gods Tungkong Langit and Aluncina. Now let's have the last island, which is the Mindanao. It is divided into six regions, Dabao region, Sambanga Peninsula, Northern Mindanao, Saksarjan, composed of South Cotabato, Cotabato, Sultan Kudarat, Sarangani, and General Santos. We also have ARMM, or Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, and Caraga region. People here in Mindanao are divided into three groups, Christian settlers, because most of them are migrants no, from Visayas, Visayas and Luzon. The second group is the Moro, no, mainly from ARMM groups. And lastly, the Lubans, consisting of 18 ethno-linguistic groups. We all know that there is a conflict. There is a conflict in Mindanao, wherein most of the, the reason behind those conflicts it involves two factors, no, mainly political and religious. Unfortunately, these conflicts no, extend to their literature, no, which seems to be widely invisible or inaccessible. And this is one of the reasons why Mindanao literature is limited. Being the only island in the Philippines wherein majority is non-Christians, ignorance among Christians, discrimination, and distortion are mostly felt by Muslim people. Some of the insensitive words associated with Muslims are being immoral because they can marry as many wives as they can, warlike, killers, and totally different from Christians. Therefore, the negative image portrayed among Muslims has perpetuated the so-called Moro-Moro literature, representing them as a savage, barbarian, bandit, lawless, and wicked. Um, we have here Paz Verdades M. Santos. She suggested in a critical review focusing primarily on the inclusion of Mindanao in contemporary lit literary published in the Ateneo de Davao University journal Tamara in 2009 that our history books 
be rewritten and more and more literature be condemned in order to address the problem of distortion and discrimination. She even stated that fairness should be followed and that the need for peace in Mindanao should be prioritized. And this is in relation to the Spanish era religious literature as well as the Comedia, which shows as well the battle between the Christians and the Muslims. Let's have the following major works in Mindanao. First, Bantugan came from northern Mindanao. This is a Maranao epic that tells about the brave Prince Bantugan of Bumbaran, whom no one dares to challenge. King Madani is jealous of his brother Bantugan and commands his people not to talk to Bantugan. This prompts Bantugan to leave their kingdom. We also have Agtubignog Keboklagan or the kingdom of Keboklagan came from Sambonga Peninsula. This is a Subanin epic that is chanted or performed during their week-long Buklog festival. It tells the life and adventures of an extraordinary hero named Taake. Next, we have Ulahingan from North Cotabato. This is a Marano Manobo, rather, a Manobo epic about Agu and his family who fled due to a conflict with their rulers. A fairy guides them and promises to grant them immortality after they surpass various challenges. Fourth, we have Indarapatra at Suleiman from Saksarjan. This is an epic about four creatures that came to wreak havoc um, in Mindanao. King Inderpatra sends his brother Prince Suleiman to save the land from the creatures. And lastly, we do have Tuwaang attends a wedding from Karaga region. This is a Bagobo epic about a hero named Tuwaang who attends the wedding of the maiden Monawan. And that sums up our lesson for this day. I hope that you learned something today. If you have questions, feel free to comment down below. Thank you so much and goodbye.